So let's start with what is the process of case binding? Well, first of all, let's do a quick comparison between a case bound book, which is here, and a perfect bound softback book. So case bound hardback, perfect bound softback. This is exactly the same artwork, same book, um, but you'll see that the hardback is slightly larger because the cover on the hardback overhangs by three or four mil on each side. The perfect bound book sits neat uh, and flush to the top, outer and bottom edge, whereas the case bound, the, uh, the harder cover overhangs a little bit. So it makes it slightly bigger, definitely more resilient and a more substantial book. Um, both the inside pages on the perfect bound softback and the hardback are glued along the left hand edge and then the cover's bound on, but obviously the cover is far weightier on the case bound version. So let's put the softback to the side for the moment and let's concentrate on the process of case binding. So if we take a look at this image of a flat cover, you can see there are three sections of 2.5 millimeter gray board that make up the hardback cover. So you've got one for the front cover, one for the center for the spine, and one for the back cover. So these are two and a half mil, and these form the, the chunky cover that we see ultimately on the final book. Over the top of that, you then wrap the cover material. So you can see on the graphic again that it overhangs, and it overhangs by 17 mil. So all of that area is glued to the inside of the cover along the top, the bottom, and the two sides. So that is what sticks the cover to the hardback case. We call it a case, and that's where the, the term case bound comes from. So when you come to take a look at our hardback setup guide for the cover, you'll notice that you have to have an extra 17 mil around all four edges. Um, it needs to have the graphics on there if you've got a background color, and that is because these tuck inside and they are partially visible right around the edge. If we pick up a book here, you can see that you can just about see kind of three to five mil around three of the edges of the cover graphic. So if you've got a full color image on the front and the back cover, you might want to continue that image onto the inside, onto this extra 17 mil. And then when it's tucked inside and glued on the inside of the hardback case, um, the image continues there. The majority of the 17 mil though is covered here, you can see by the end papers. So the end paper is a continuous double page spread, continuous sheet of paper, twice the width of the text block. So it's glued on the left hand side here to the inside of the front cover. And then the right hand side then forms the first leaf of the book. So we've got left hand side glued, right hand side, you can have content on, on all three of these panels. And then when you turn that leaf over, you are then on the right hand side into the text pages of the book. If we look at it from the side, you can see the mechanics. So the end paper is glued to the inside front cover and at the back of the book glued to the inside back cover. That is what keeps the text block within the case bound cover itself. So you can see the text block is glued with resilient PUR glue along the left hand edge. If you do have a larger budget, then there is an option for us to bind the inside pages into sections and then either glue in sections or section sew the left hand edge. That is more of an expensive process though. It's a process that tends to be done by old school book binders still. Um, so it's very retro, it does look awesome and uh, it does make the, the binding really tough, but our PUR glue is tough in itself and definitely a cost saving option there. We have 96 inside pages here. I'll just put this to the side. You can actually see that the 96 inside pages are collated into three sections. So three sections for the inside pages and then they are bound together along the left hand edge and then the end papers attached on. What I will do on this job, it's a recent one, is I'll put up a video just now showing the final process where the text block with the end papers on then gets added to the front cover, pulled through the last processes of the binding and then you get a finished book.
So to wrap up the case binding process itself, we've got the front cover, which is wrapped and glued around the three part cover case made up of the front cover, the back cover and the spine, 2.5 mil gray board. So it's nice and tough. Then we have the end papers glued to the inside front cover and inside back cover. And then the text block itself is glued to the end paper. So the text block actually isn't glued to the front cover at all. It's glued to the end papers, which are glued to the cover. So a final couple of points on the end papers. When you supply us with the artwork for the end papers for the start of the book, if the end papers are going to be printed, you're going to supply us with two double page spreads, one for this spread and one for this spread. And obviously the leaf that gets glued to the inside front cover, that's going to be blank. So you've got three pages of content that you can provide artwork for, left, right, and then left. And at the back of the book, again, two double page spreads, one for this one with content on the left and the right. And then one for this one on the reverse of that end paper, where you've just got content on the right, and then the left hand side is obviously glued to the inside of the front cover. So three pages of content there, potentially you can add content to on the end papers or you can leave them blank or we can go for the coloured colour plan route um, where it takes the, the end papers, take the colour of the actual paper itself. And then a final technical point when you're preparing the artwork, you'll see here because the end papers are glued to the first text page, you're losing kind of five mil of that first text page is completely obscured because it's glued on. You'd want to keep any content a good 10 to 15 mil away from the spine side of that first text page and of the last text page to ensure that the reader doesn't have to really force the page down to actually be able to see that content. So keep any logos or any important information. I mean, that one's probably two centimeters, 20 mil away from the edge. That works perfectly. Again, with the inside pages, don't have anything too cramped into the middle, otherwise you really have to press it down. It makes the reader work. That's not great, really. It's not very ergonomic. So if you keep content a good kind of two centimeters away from the spine side of the page, that's perfect. The last thing that I'll mention on the mechanics is the inside pages. We need an absolute bare minimum of 28 inside pages. 28 is really thin, 32 or 36 or 40 would be better. Children's books, I know that sometimes children's book authors struggle to get to 32, so 28 is, is the absolute, absolute minimum. I stress that by saying absolute a lot of times. Um, that gets you to just about thick enough for us to glue it, any thinner, and that there's just not enough surface area to get the PUR glue down. Um, so 28 pages will give you about a three mil spine. Ideally, 32, 36, 40 would be brilliant.